From as early as I can remember, I have not felt safe. There was also a deep sadness I can't explain. At age 11, I was introduced to drugs and alcohol, and that brought some relief. In the years that followed, I endured several traumas. The results have been living with daily doses of chronic fear and exhaustion. Even though now I'm sober, I'm not healed. No one in my life understands what I'm going through. And I mask my pain and fear as much as possible. I'm wondering if healing is possible. We can take our most debilitating problem and turn it into medicine. The word medicine is something that we associate with sort of mainstream, hey, I go to the doctor, I get some medicine. When we're talking about the word medicine, what we're talking about is anything that helps us. And a lot of times our medicine comes from our struggles and our trials and tribulations. So our work is to turn that into a medicine or a virtue rather than stay stuck in the problem. There's a lot of people that come here and said, you know, this is a, this is my last effort. If this doesn't work, I'm gonna kill myself. You know, so that's that's really where the, the people that are that come here are at that state. Our whole process is designed to just go layer by layer by layer. Our program is a 30-day program, and it's designed in um, weekly increments. So each week, there's a desired goal. So week one, when people are coming, they're not feeling very well. Um, people show up here with various states of suffering, whether it's with an addiction or depression or some kind of trauma. So the first week, the goal is really to be able to settle the nervous system and to allow people to start feeling safe, to start feeling cared about so that they can calm themselves down. We feed them well. Nutrition is key. We're finding out more and more that depending on how healthy our gut is, it directly affects our mental health. They get rest and they start the process of the program of really getting to understand what some of these issues, these core issues are. So a lot of the modalities that we do here are very much science-based. At the beginning of the program, we obtain a brain map, a quantitative EEG, in order to establish a baseline. We then take another brain map at the end of the program to compare the two. Using the HeartMath technology, generating sustained positive emotions facilitates a shift to a specific, scientifically measurable state, also known as psychophysiological coherence. What we're doing with the heart math is using this biofeedback tool that's monitoring your heart in real time with a sensor that you're going to put on your ear. It picks up your pulse and it analyzes it for its rhythm patterns. In fight or flight, the stress response will speed it up and the relaxation response will slow it down. And that's one of the interesting things that the brain does. It doesn't know the difference between the actual experience and the memory of the experience. To the brain, it's all the same. This is about you experiencing the trauma of your experiences, which were very real. You can't change that. In 2007, I was in an emergency landing on my way to Ecuador. That was an event I did not emotionally recover from. I've not been on a plane since and will never get on a plane. I 
I'm feeling like maybe this isn't gonna work. I guess it's really a feeling. I believe when people show up here, there's a real core fear, a fear that we're not gonna change. We get people that have been around the block. They've been in therapy, they've been to treatment, they've done self-help groups, they've done consciousness work, they've done energy work, and they're really frightened that, oh my gosh, what if this does not work? Every year seems to bring another fear. A year ago, I was hit at 80 miles per hour three times by a driver on the freeway who lost control. So post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD, is post-trauma. And so we want to desensitize you from that so that you no longer have this experience. I spent 30 years in addiction. I spent 20 years trying to get well from addiction, and I don't even think about it anymore. I'm not defined by the problem. I'm defined by the solution, which is, hey, you want to learn how to live and be free of addiction, anxiety, depression, all these labels. Well, there's a ton of science that tells us that we can do that now. And interestingly enough, we mix that science with ancient science. And those things in combination become extremely powerful. We have somatic experiencing, EMDR, cognitive behavioral therapy, of course, helping us to repattern cognitive restructuring, art therapy processes. Then we create a lot of ceremony and ritual. For example, fire ceremony, you know, rites of passage, breath work. All of these things help us to disarm and connect to our really authentic place, not our defended place. The sweat lodge is a Native American tradition. Our work is an amalgamation of several traditions, so we put them all together to create our version of the sweat ceremony. The sweat helps us to break the confines of the literal mind and get down to what's really true for us and connect to our own internal wisdom. We have to change our disempowering beliefs. So anybody that has a self-esteem issue, for example, hey, I feel bad about myself. Well, nothing from the external world is gonna alleviate that. So this is where we have to have a complete perceptual shift. And in order to achieve that, we have to work on the whole body, mind, soul, spirit. I feel as if I'm slipping away from myself. There's nothing to hold on to. There's that part of us that I think becomes petrified because we know we're gonna to have to go in deep and go into those places that might be very tender that we've been protecting those wounded parts. A lot of fear is coming up because uh, what Jody doesn't realize yet is that She's not here for what she thinks she's here for. Just trying to manage. PTSD, anxiety, depression, addictions of various sorts. Those are all symptoms. Let's get down to the root. The root 
of human behavior in the most rudimentary way is basically we seek pleasure and avoid pain. People typically in week two go through some very emotional moments, ups and downs. It's like being on an emotional roller coaster because they're beginning to see parts of themselves that they just did not have access to before. They're also getting into a lot of fears, a lot of shame, guilt, blame comes up. We start diving deep into family of origin issues. So it's a very tender week for people, but also very illuminating. You want to feel like you're not being held hostage by your fear. You know, your trauma started before the plane and the emergency landing and the car accident. And you've tapped into that since you've been here. Yeah, just take some time with that. It's taking a nice deep breath and out through the mouth. And allowing that antenna, the spine of yours to connect in with spirit. What is it opening into? What we want to be able to do is embody this stuff. We can only do that through an experience. That's called epigenetics. And as I change my biology, <laughs> the expression of my biology changes, and all of a sudden, I can heal from a disease, including addiction. And it works. Many have experienced deep healing here. Be with us. Let's bring your medicine to us. Let's do face our fears, face our shadows. Show us the way beyond fear. I began the journey of pills and opiates and had a very debilitating opiate habit for many years. Then I started smoking crack cocaine, and you know, you talk about something's gonna rip your soul out. Nobody really knew the extent of what was going on. Finally, you know, I just had the breakdown. And there's so much shame involved that, that I just couldn't tell anybody. And I, so I had this whole dual life going on, which I think a lot of people that have addictions do. The thing was a nightmare. Breathing in to your heart and out into the heart of Mother Earth. Everything's landing really heavy in my heart right now, and um, so I'm kind of freaking out. You have people that have really have this awakening where they begin to get in touch with this, the buried, repressed thoughts and subconscious mind, and then they don't know what to do because that will manifest as wanting to escape. That's part of what an awakening is, is getting in touch with the soul. This week was a lot of ups and downs. It's been a pretty, um, emotional week for me and painful week. People on this planet have forgotten who they are, and so there's only a matter of time before the soul wakes up, and that manifests in a crisis. So crisis becomes the wake-up call. She has really gotten in touch with her anger. She's really been getting in touch with that real sense of power that she has. With every step, I was asking that I step into my power and release these fears that I have that have brought me here.
Now by week three, people are actually beginning to feel better. They've gone in and started to look at these patterns and behaviors that have been keeping them stuck in their lives. They've started the process of healing and releasing these patterns so that they feel a little bit more spacious, they feel a little bit more lighter, a little bit freer. When you're doing things like traditional therapy, psychotherapy, you're working on the mind, the conscious mind and you're neglecting the subconscious mind. And so you've got this huge iceberg below the surface, which is like 95% of the way people operate all day long. Meditation is a tool that's been around since humans existed. I mean, it's the, it's the, there's volumes of documentation on why it works, how it works. And yet it's the thing that most people don't do. For me, it hasn't been about digging into the old story, but digging out of it. Today in meditation, I had a clear vision of my story and I saw a clear path out. In the vision, my fishing pole was facing backwards to catch past emotions. There was a door to my future self in front of me. I've always thought of the veil as more of a collective idea but in my vision, I was actually the keeper of my own veil. The veil is my illusion of unworthiness. I didn't know what it meant to be addicted to my story until this moment. I don't want to waste this life. I want to take an adventure of the soul, the soul's adventure. She took my hand and put it on the table that I saw all of these different incarnations. What if I'm not me? What if I'm all of these integrations somehow. My patterns were pushed aside to reveal a library of deeper understanding of who I am beyond the patterns. circumstances, calling back all those sparkling pieces of your soul back home, back home to you. so freeing and so I don't know it just felt like it's gonna be okay to be me they start actually having an embodiment experience an experiential where it becomes not something they know but something now that they are living and being and it's a new perceptual shift It's time to heal. I want to honor that part of me that's been hiding. I want to honor that part of me that's unique. The final week is really focusing on stepping into this, this greater version of who they are, that person that they really came here to be. So quick.
clear to me what I'm supposed to be doing. It's almost like there's this light, cosmic light, and that's the truest part of who I am. I mean, I can see it. It's so clear. I want so much to be that person. We take another brain map at the end of the program to compare the two. When you came, the initial brain map is with, well within the normal population, and that's what the green is about. The changes, let's look at the other one. This one now has an incredibly increased amount of energy in the speech and language area and in the visualization and emotional area, those two have increased profoundly, far beyond the norm. It would look to me like you're waking up and integrating very high energy. Which is kind of amazing, because one of my issues that I had when I came here was the low energy from the that's, Hashimoto's. That's right. We can actually say, wow, this really did work. And they'll see that the fact that their brain has actually now adapted and changed based on all of these different techniques and tools and practices they've learned. I am definitely gathering pieces of myself that have been discarded. It's stepping into the richest place of my being. We're looking for that energetic shift, and that happened for Jody, I'd say about, 10 days ago, where enough process work happens, enough of the release of trauma. She's actually here because all of those things were stopping her from living her dream and making her contribution on planet Earth and somehow in some way that she probably doesn't even know yet. Today is my last day here. It's been completely transformational. I have energy, I have a sense of wholeness. I feel, I feel like a new person. What I see now when I speak with you, after all these weeks that you've been here, is that it has come in. Mm. You know, the wisdom has come through, which is beautiful. I haven't flown in 11 years. <laughs>